this week's podcast I'm so excited about. Without this man, there would never have been Mass Monster, our first WPI, Myositin, and many of the other products that started the Body Science brand back in 1999. It was one of those times in life when I wanted to start this this brand and I had to find someone to make my flavors. And what I found was I'd talk to people about flavoring protein. They go, you want a what? Like we, we don't do that. And let's rip into this story. John McDermott is here. He is one of the people that helped me start Body Science from a perspective of letting me into his brand to develop products. Mate, it's so good to have you here. Oh, thanks, Greg. It's good to be here, mate. Let's rip in. Welcome to the Body Science Podcast, bringing you everything you need, want, and should know about health, fitness, nutrition, and training. As always, the information contained in this podcast is for the information purposes only and is not designed to diagnose or be prescriptive to treat, prevent, or manage any injury, disease, or other health-related condition. This podcast was brought to you by the newest product to enter the body science performance range, Myocytin. Independent research-proved body science Myocytin to outperform standard creatine. In only six days, athletes ingesting Myocytin gained more than twice as much body mass as those consuming regular creatine. Athletes also increased upper arm girth by over 200% more than regular creatine users and improved their bench press performance significantly more than users of regular creatine. Ask your local supplement retailer how to get yours. Welcome to Body Science HQ, the world of fit, happy, and healthy. And I'm going to throw at the end of that the man that helped me start Body Science. I think this this guy, John, who I'm talking to right now, was one of the reasons that Body Science had success in the early days is that our products just tasted better. And John, we're going to go have a little chat today. It's, you know, we're relaunching Myocytin. You were the first person to contract manufacture that formula that we made. And I remember I did, we have, I have so many things I want to talk about now. I haven't seen you for a few years and it's so good to have you here. Do you, do you just want to start with giving a a little bit of background on yourself because you're a pretty clever guy. Mm-hmm. Oh, thanks, Greg. Uh, I'm still working. You uh, are? That's yes. good. <laughs> 74 and um, still exporting to the islands. It's gone off a bit now, of course, with COVID. Yeah. But I remember the old days. I remember the myocytin and um, the WPI. and <laughs> The mass I'm, monster. You were famous for yeah, mass monsters. Yeah. Uh, chocolate honeycomb. Yeah, and, that's um, the one. Other flavours as well. Yeah. But um, the myocytin was an interesting uh, one because it, was, it wasn't it was protein-based, was it? No, and you hadn't yeah. really worked in that area before either. Yeah. You were very much. Do you, do you want to tell people about yourself? So, John, you basically created the first ever soy protein flavoured drink yeah, in Australia, yeah, yeah? Yeah, that's true. They We did it from an isolate and yep. we did it in UHT and I was the first person to make that. And I did it in, uh, with Jelner, a pasteurised product as yep. well. Both both products were made in Melbourne and they uh, both went nationwide. And um, that was probably in about 1980, 1980 or 82. And just look at the supermarkets now, it's just they're full of products, of yeah, similar products. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. So, so you bought that technology, you, you, you started working in that area and yeah. mate, to make the early soy proteins to t- taste good too. You must have been a magician because. Oh, thanks, Greg. <laughs> There's a few little secrets. A few little. We used to use a special milk flavour in it. Yeah. Which is um, non non dairy. Yep. Yeah. So. So there's all, and mate, um, you even supplied McDonald's at one stage. Yeah, we supplied uh, 30 tonne per month to McDonald's Southeast Asia. Yeah, and that was their... Uh, soft, soft serve. Soft serve ice yeah. cream. So you are definitely the man that knew how to run a good flavour house. Like, oh, you know, And it's really interesting. Do you want to tell, tell people how you and I actually met? Yes. The thing, we were introduced b- via, I, I remember Clear as Crystal, I, I have never told you this before, but I remember as Clear as Crystal that you recommended to me by some sort of uh, university or something over right because and it was through through um, Hulshers and Narden, yep. right? And they said, oh, John's probably a go. And and the reason why I can give a lot of credit to uh, Narden is in 1976, before you were born, <laughs> um, the, um, I, I was able to, get to visit a flavorist in Holland. Yep. And he was very, very good. He, he gave me a lot of secrets and told me a bit about the basic stuff, combining certain things. And from, from that, you came up with the idea of um, flavoring proteins. And that wasn't um, known those days. Mm. We, we, I, I, I don't think there was any flavored protein drinks in 
Australia or mixes. I don't think there was. There, there was, but they weren't something you look forward to. Oh. <laughs> you know, they, they, they were pretty rough back, in, know, well, back I, in that I, day. I never had them. Yeah, but, no. yeah, your, the ones you created were like it changed. I mean, I just remember so clearly back in the early days, people just go, you've made protein taste good. Yeah. Um, and I, yeah. as much as I used to claim it, it wasn't me. It was you. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. But it was so much fun. Like I, I've, I've got to tell people here that John, when he came in, he goes, well, if you want me to flavor proteins, come and do it with me. And I'm like, can I come in? Yeah. And he's like, yeah, and I got there and I worked out, what, did you have four or five staff? Oh, we had probably seven or eight staff then. You had a yeah. rotating, you did, yeah. I mean, yeah. pretty we, big... we did dub, double ships and so on. But, yeah, and uh, you, you were the man that looked after the technology and the flavors and all yeah, that stuff. Yeah, I was stuff. in charge. So yeah. we'd, we'd white lab coat up, he'd put me in the room, and then he'd just go, this is how you do it. And I remember he used to lay out and you go, what we're going to do, Greg, is we're going to, I think with you, because he'll tell you how anal I was back in the day, <laughs> I remember we were doing a vanilla. I, doing, it was, I think it was vanilla WPI. And I've gone, let's do vanilla thinking, okay, vanilla is one flavor john rocks up with i don't know yeah 15 20 different vanillas and i'm like what he goes well there's vanilla ice cream there's vanilla this there's vanilla that and so we sat there and we just made vanilla after vanilla after vanilla and then he would go i've had enough greg i'm out so i would come in and do <laughs> greg there's one thing is that um you can only taste so many um products at a time yeah exactly yeah. so but i remember you were uh, you were very, very fussy, I tell you. <laughs> well, I, I just remember it needed to taste good. You know, Body Science was a nothing brand back then. And it wasn't like net these days where you had social media where you could launch with people and create something from nothing. Yeah, yeah we, we didn't um, know of you, to be perfectly honest, when we first met. Um, and we didn't much research or anything, but you seemed like a pretty decent bloke <laughs> and you're a surfer but writer. For, that's a good start. Uh, and um, I remember... Um, just getting off the subject a bit, but I remember. Um, That's unlike you. <laughs> <laughs> I remember um, seeing a surfboard um, in a in a, um, in a takeaway shop with um, a BSC logo on. I said, "Oh, this bloke is um, seems to be um, pretty well known." <laughs> yeah, in the Gold Coast. Yeah. Uh, the cool story here is I used to go up and John would would prep, and I'd just sit there for days just doing flavors. It was. And you, and you were Brisbane based. I was Gold Coast, just to drive yeah. up, and yeah. we just and we got to know each other really well, and it was really exciting because everything I wanted to do, John gave me somebody that I could lean on to get things done, and it was it was even to sourcing. I mean, you you helped me source some some different proteins back in the day from different supply chain that wasn't around at the time, and it was a really exciting time to to work with someone. And, and just stepping back to the old days when we were flavoring proteins, you were pretty much specializing in meats back then, weren't you? Mainly, yeah. Mainly, we we did a fair few other products as well, though. We did things like chicken boosters and um, salami seasonings, and but basically um, meat, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. But one thing, getting back to you, Greg, is that we developed all the flavors for you, and I think that was the original draft, the original objective. I think it was as part of the referral. You were referred to me from someone in Melbourne, and I think the original idea was consult you about all the flavor technology and then it, it developed as you said we, we, we produced lots of really nice flavors and we used to combine things like honeycomb with the uh vanilla yep um because and it was just it gave us a sweeter note sort mm. of thing and um chocolate we used to use um va vanilla as well they're just just all little tiny it was secrets all those little had. secrets you did you said greg put a bit of vanilla in that chocolate it'll pop and i'm like you want to put yeah. vanilla in chocolate yeah and it would just it just became creamy it was it was so i mean the flavors of come a long way in, in 21 years yeah. since we did that. Like the flavor options now through the yeah. roof. And because, um, Greg, that um, you were always really fastidious and, and a bit strange <laughs> <laughs> because we you had to know everything about the uh, flavors. Yeah. You had to, you demanded to know all the break up of the flavors. And to be honest, you're a bit of a pain, <laughs> to be honest like that. And um, be, because you know, with a flavor, it, it's, it's a certain chemical name or whatever. Yeah. And it just have things like nature identical and um, um, natural and so on. But you just say, John, we need the carriers. We need to have everything. We need every single detail. And even with the suppliers, they said, why do they need to know that? We, we, we don't give that stuff information out. But it was all always recorded. Yeah. And um, I understand now, and jumping ahead many, many points, Greg, I could tell you a lot of things, but just jumping ahead, I started realising that you were pretty well known or beginning to be well known for your attention to detail. And because you had to uh, address the requirements of athletes, particularly once competing in uh, yeah. games, uh, Olympic games and so forth, they can't have any drugs or anything like that or any foreign material. And, and we're getting the point in a minute, but you, you not only you did you um, take um, technical 
data into account, you actually, I remember at the Southern Uni- University in Lismore, you use athletes to take certain foods with the supplements and then they were examine the stools even and uh, to, to access what was required and what was passed and so yeah. on and so on. So you proved it, verified it, right? And I went on your website um, um, a few weeks ago and you've taken us to the whole new level, mate. I mean, you really have. I oh, made the whole new level is way yeah, it, easier though because there yeah. are specialists in that area now and I can sleep at night. You know, I remember back in the old days, if, if we were using my site with creatine, I'd, and it was really hard to find creatine back in those days too, remember? Like these things, this is 21 years ago we're talking yeah. about. It wasn't like you could buy it everywhere. And I used to harass those guys like where's it coming from what's it happening yeah. where's it, i want pictures of the factory what else do they make what do they do because we were giving products like in 2002 the roosters went on to win the premiership hmm. And that sort of launched our brand in, in sport and nutrition. Well, people are going, oh, that's great. And I'm going, wow, well, what about drugs in sport? Like yeah, I, yeah. no one's really talking about that back then. So we started our own protocols in relation to drugs in sport. And um, that's where what you're talking about there, how I was a real pain in the ass in that area. And then, mm. you know, I had to have the same creatine supplier every week because I'd bring up someone like Kenny Wallace. I go, how you going, Kenny? He go, good, Greg. I said, you've been drug tested? He go, yep. I go, okay, put that in the diary. Kenny Wallace drug tested, the supplier of that creatine, da, da, da. And I didn't deviate. I used the same creatine for nearly 10 years mm. in those early days. It was a really tough gig yeah. doing that. But Greg, you've taken it to the, a new, a, another level, right? Because again, I've been on the website and I can't believe what you're doing there. You have it, this accreditation. I mean, you have um, the uh, <coughs> the batch numbers. So you have, the Hastur accreditation, the, yeah. Well, I mean, not, you would have hated that. That would, no, You would have said, no, stick that up no, for us, Greg. <laughs> I'm not doing that. We, we had Hassett. <laughs> we had Hassett, mate. Yeah, you, yeah. Even when we were working for you, right? We yeah. had Hassett, right? But I mean, the you, you get, um, and we used to record all the batch number. We you were um, helped us actually in the hazard because we had to record every batch number and we had to weigh out. Um, uh, we had to make sure we, we say we're doing a thousand um, kilo product, right? We had to make sure that uh, all the bags were um, check weight because yep. you can even say you got twenty kg in a bag, but because sometimes they'd have twenty point five, yep. and you'd better have to check every weigh every bag and so on because the protein could have been a bit high or low. One thing that used to happen is I'd get, and you probably don't know this. I'd be coming up and the boys would go. I'd walk in the factory. They go, "Oh, he's here." I go, "Oh, what's wrong?" They go, oh, "John made us do a really big clean down yesterday because you're coming up today." Yeah. Like he made us scrub everything, and <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. But, but we, we were in Hassett, but you helped us um, get better at that, to be honest, because your attention to detail. We had to do everything perfectly. One thing the, is is right is that uh, you were a bit of a pain for the staff because everything had to be spotless when Greg <laughs> came up because we had to do a com- complete clean down because normally if you're doing a sausage seasoning for example you could you could we used to do 1.2 ton blends right yep. so if you only had a, a kilo or so left over and we only had a kilo or so left over in the blend you could uh, made if you had a, another seasoning you could it, it, it didn't it didn't matter made no difference yeah but you said you had to clean down everything. Yeah, I was, yeah. I was yeah. about that. The one thing yeah. I wanted was I obviously didn't want sausage-flavoured vanilla WPI yeah, exactly. back in those yeah. days. But <clears throat> the real reason was, mate, I'd, I'd just come from a stint at Far Labs where I, I'd started a company with McFarland Laboratories in New Zealand and we were working through Asia and I'd spent so much time in manufacturing plants in Malaysia, for example, creating products for MLM companies. One thing I, I've got to say about the Malaysian manufacturing, there was a lot of third world in Malaysia but there was also some of the most technical factories I've ever seen. Mm. And they're the ones we partnered with because McFarland Laboratories at the time was um, very specific on their R&D and their technology. And, and I'd come from an audit background. Previously, I was with KPMG. Mm. So for me, I just set up audit programs around your business that made my life easy. Yeah. But as you know, your staff, but they, the staff loved making our product too because they all walked away with a couple of kilos of protein <laughs> each each batch and they're all on my site and then they're yeah. all having a lot of fun. And we all became good friends, actually. It, yeah. was, it was a really good part yeah. of my my life back in those days, yeah. back in those early days. It was, and it was just me, you know, I was, um, you know, and, and, and Cherie was doing her thing, but she wasn't coming up to do this. It was just us working. Yeah, remember you remember you were fairly small, to be honest. I can't get over how you've, how, how you've grown. I just can't get over it because jumping ahead a lot of points is that um, I, a few years ago, uh, when you know you started in the, um, in the, uh, 
shop at, at Burley, again in Burley. Yeah, had a little time. So I started yeah. actually in the back of my house in the oh, garage. Okay. Yeah, at, yeah. I probably didn't tell you. I probably told you. I probably took a picture up of another factory. That, <laughs> you know, this made it look really big. But yeah, it started It started in a, uh, a very small way and it very quickly grew. Like back then, we hadn't gone down the heavy, heavy, heavy bodybuilding angle. We, mm. We'd definitely gone down the um, physical and mental, the, the, the sports, fitness and health, which we still, we still have the same DNA today that we started back then. And the market market switch around to come back towards this way and yeah, it was just everything was just fun back then yeah. mate like it's i wasn't earning any money i, I didn't I, get I, any money I remember, out of body science for years I just, I just remember I, I was just slogging away knowing this thing will work but i remember your uh your first office and she sharia was there yeah and um i think chris 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 was there yeah yeah, yeah. and um also your brother was there i've been he's a little bit of, so we basically yeah. had a web guy yeah yeah um, Sheree was she's a chartered accountant she was yeah. a guru in that space so I never had to stress that stuff yeah. um, and but the thing I, you I liked you always got paid on time you said that was something important <laughs> to our relationship many I times know, I know <laughs> John that's true John is one of the best business people that I like I, I talk about early day mentors like he, he had Starmac which was uh, his small blending company this is the best story ever and I hope you don't get in trouble from this I won't mention their name but a few years in he goes oh Greg I've, a UK brand wants to buy me mm, that's true and yeah. I've gone oh what does that mean for me me. He goes, oh, I'm going to stay in it for a few years. We'll be in it. He goes, you developed all your own formulas because you were here. They're not like my IP that I oh, created. Definitely. Yeah. He, he said, y you were there doing that so much of that. They're your formula. So don't yeah. worry about all that. But this guy does a deal in, and I'll, I'll just pick a number out. Like, let's just say a million dollars. Okay. Does a million dollar deal. As it's closing, he goes, that's a pound deal, not a Australian <laughs> dollar deal. <laughs> and the guys in the UK have choked because they didn't even pick up that he changed it to pound from, <laughs> from Australian dollars. They thought they were buying this thing for like mm. half the price. And he we, you know, just- we made, a, we made a good deal. Very though. clever at what he did in those early days. And it's just little things that I remember. Like I used to sit down with you and go, you know, back then, what was I? I was- I was a young guy, like I was taking a risk. I just left KPMG. I'd worked for, with McFarland Laboratories for a while, but that was me in Asia doing my own thing. And I come here and I, I finally had someone who sort of mentored me a little bit and those little things that you did and the way you told me you did all those, although you were probably a little bit deceitful in that one. Um, <laughs> well, the smart, had the better solicitor is probably the best way to put it. Uh, I just learned a lot about negotiating and doing things back then. That And, you know, I mean, you introduced me to all the Coles and Woolworths people at that time. You were making mixes for Coles mm. and Woolies, and now they're two of our biggest clients. Yeah, we actually um, produced a lot of things for Woolworths. Yeah. Um, there's a company called Bruce Meats, which is fully owned by Woolworths, and um, we, we had a lot of firsts that we um, injected, um, a, again, a marinade into um, – Rump. Yep. And we used to do um, steaks, and uh, it was called um, country and all different different styles. But um, it was a bit of a first, to be honest. Um, I've, I've, I've made a few firsts. So we, we did a, the first Australian um, heart approved sausage for Woolworths. Yeah, okay. The first uh, high fiber sausage for Woolworths. Yep. Because fiber meat doesn't contain any fiber. Mm. And we did use 3% inulin, which is a bit of a secret those days. Yep. Um, soluble fiber from hickory. Nice little and, prebiotic. Pardon? Prebiotic. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah, as well. So um, that was a pretty good. Um, but you used to work with hams and everything, didn't you? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Um, I remember. You, I won't tell the secret. You told me how a, a ham is made one day, and I thought, wow, I, I need to tell people that when I'm drinking beer, the old cob, the needle. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's injected and massaged. Yeah, we won't we won't yeah. go too heavily into that because yeah. that's obviously a big product for some people yeah. in the market now. Yeah, but uh, you just taught me so much about that food side. But uh, you even you helped me find new manufacturers when the time was right. Like a, you talk about like a good person when it was because back in the early days we only had a few products: WPI, Mass Monster. We had Myocytin, and we had the yeah. GHC three, which was yeah. creatine, glutamine, HMB mix, and yeah. you also packed out creatines and glutamines and those the single yeah. aminos for me. And I remember when it was time when the the UK companies thought they better come over and actually grab that asset that cost them a lot of money of yours. And you just said, Greg, I don't think this will be a good partnership for you. And you helped me find some after that yeah. time when you were in there and, and you were about to yeah. exit. But they, you, you always aim to form formulations yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. because, because you were formulations anyway. Yeah. Mean, well, that's something I learned in Malaysia when I was over there. They taught me how to formulate products. So. Yeah. Well, you, to you told us what to do. Yeah, and you also brought the products. Remember, mm. yeah, brought the ingredients. Yeah, it was it was yeah. an interesting but, time. The business is completely but, different. But I now. just want to say about how you've grown because I remember that I remember that shop 
uh, was it was a nice shop, you know, and I'm, I, I just remember your attention to detail and the offices were always in the same as this office here. It's it's always, what's the word for it? It's always, can't think of the right word, but um, char- char- charismatic and um, market, market focus. But I can't think of the right word for it. But um, then... Uh, Progress. You, you remember you were beside a um, a big bicycle shop there, right at Jason. You had to yeah, that was at Miami. Shop. That was the first my, my, yeah. Miami. Yeah. yeah, you had to go to um, you had to go via a shop to um, you know to um, get, get to your shop. So all the athletes are in, in who used to ride um, really good bikes, they <laughs> they'd see all the body science stuff. They said, "Oh, what's going on here?" So th- th- that's um, how you possibly grew. But I can I can't imagine. And then you also had a uh, business in Sydney too. It was, a smaller business, right? But and I've also been there. But um, I can I couldn't get over um, your progression. Not many years after, I, I can't get over it because I saw the factory. It's it's only well, I'm not too sure it was still there, but it's it was it used to be um, uh, only about a mile or so. Is that still there? Yeah, or? it's yeah. still around. Yeah, but it, it's it's huge. I mean, there were semi trailers. <laughs> <laughs> so what's going on here? There were semi-trailers lined up. For, well, now yeah. we've got the the factory here. We've got a factory in Melbourne, and we've got a really cool office in Sydney. So that's our that's yeah. our structure. Yeah. Yeah. But you've grown a lot, Greg. <laughs> yeah. Mate, it's been uh, it's really interesting because I remember um I remember back in the old days you said oh I should buy into you, Greg. <laughs> and I'm thinking I, I saw that prick rip those other people off. There's no way I'm getting into that contract contract with him. <laughs> I just remember. <laughs> but yeah, looking at the days, it was um it was so interesting just having you help me get through those. And look, body science wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for you. I don't think, John. I, oh, I really appreciate that. Yeah, you say you say a lot of nice things, Greg. Yeah. One thing that's really exciting is, is um you found the set first set of scales we ever made body science products on for me. Yes, you. yes, it, 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 we could weigh a, um, a stamp on them. We yeah. went to point eight one of a gram, and that's because I remember you whinging about that. And I said, "Oh, mate, we I'll put this, and you're going, oh, geez, I'm not used to using this and this, yeah, and yeah, yeah, because we were getting really technical with flavors. Remember, yeah. like we were, yeah. we were, we weren't just getting vanilla or chocolate. We were making blended flavors because yeah. back then you didn't have the you didn't have the options. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. It's, I'll be very precise. Mm-hmm. You had to do, do it exactly right, and then you. Yeah, have to um, scale it up, of course. Yeah. Mm. I used to love that on blending days, John, and say, we're going to blend your product today. Do you want to come up? It was awesome. Yeah. I just yeah. loved, I just, I wasn't yeah. real good in the cleaning part when that happened. I sort of <laughs> said, hey, well, he pays you guys, not me. Yeah. But it was, um, it was exciting to, to go from the aspect of working in the lab with you to create a flavor to then being able to actually make that product yeah. in production days. That yeah. was, um, I just don't do that anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, everyone's got their own flavor house now and it's, it's all done so differently. Yeah. But yeah. though, I'll never forget those days uh, back uh, then. Yeah. So, but I remember um, you you were always ahead of your time, I reckon, because the uh, I remember clearly that we came up with an idea of making vegan products. We did. This is, wow, this is yeah. back in yeah. like 2013 and, or something like that. Yeah, yeah. early days. And um, you um, come on board with it. We, we could say a lot about- This is foods too. This isn't protein. This is like- Fake chicken, fake bacon. Yeah, we don't like to use that word. I know you don't like to use it, but what, what did you call it? Um, you know, vegan, vegan, it's just yeah. vegan, and because it's all. It's um, what I want to say is that to you is that you're ahead of your time, mate. You really were because um, they weren't. Um, we talked about eight or nine years ago. They weren't really Would popular those than days. That. But there was Solid and Coles and Woolies everywhere. Yeah, and san- Sanitarium. Um, they know, took the project on, didn't they? In the end, they took it on, didn't they? Oh yeah, well they they were doing um, um, vegan type products before. You know, coming called Longer Life were, were taken over by Sanitarium. They were part of the reason why we, we, we consulted to them as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and they were a great company, really, really great company. And we, it was all about flavour work there there as well. But what I'm saying is, is that you were ahead of your time because you said that um, there's a market for this. And we we actually employed a chef. I remember Clear as Crystal, the chef in a uh, Yeah, we had a restaurant, yeah. Yeah, and um, we we used to, we use these vegan products, and um, the um, it, it ended up not going ahead, right? Because you decided whatever. Yeah. Um, but you're ahead of your time, and now uh, the other thing is that um, I know we talked about paleo bars, and we shared a lot of old. I mean, it, by the way, that vegan thing was before two thousand. It was before two thousand thirteen. That yeah. would have been back before two thousand and ten. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, that would have so, been, and that was. Time. I remember. I went to a whole lot of because there were there weren't many you, vegans. You made, you made brushes even at that time, and I and got they were fantastic. I got four or five people around, and I said I've made pizzas, and I said it's all vegan. And then 
the big argument came up. Why would I want a chicken flavored pizza if I'm vegan or vegetarian? And we're talking a long, long time ago. And the whole lot went and I thought, this is good. Then I went back to John and said, John, we need to capture this and and work this out. My problem was I didn't have a a market to actually go to with it. I couldn't put it in my traditional health food stores back then because they just didn't get it. And And that's why I walked away. But remember we went to the restaurant and we we actually made like all the meals, shot them all, did everything. um, The salads and whole We got everyone in to taste them. And it was, when you look at flavors, it was nine out of 10. 10, I remember the days, 10 out of 10. I'm thinking, shit, I wish I had a market um, I could launch. You did a brochure on it even. Yeah. I I, I, I really wanted, I wanted, to go yeah. to market with it but i just back then we were we were very single channel yeah. and the, the channel that we worked in just couldn't get their head yeah. around putting and, these products in um, look you know, to be honest look we, we, we shared some lot of fun times yeah. together and do you remember um we we were talking about a um a vegan jerky yeah. years and years and years and years ago yeah. we um we actually did it ourselves we called farmer farmer john's right yeah. and we, we actually got it in the market and we sold it to cruelty free shops all, all over all around you know, melbourne i never got my royalty on that but, mate hmm? just so you know uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but um, that was a fair bit of work, to be honest. And yeah. I think there's a there's vegan jerky sold um, in Coles and Woolies now. It, it, it's it's they're, they're very very sweet though because we we're doing uh, trying to do a pretty healthy one. But um, there's the sort of things that I I remember you remember um, we there was some big. Um, um, I think it was um, the triathlon or something. There was a CrossFit and, show on, and we yeah, yeah we, did, we did. We did. It was too much garlic in the yeah, and I want I wanted to make a a, a meat based yeah, paleo oh, bar. Yeah, this was right. back in two thousand eleven or it, something. It, it, we actually got it pretty good, except that we had a um, had uh, too much garlic in it. Everyone loved it though. I mean, it was yeah, yeah. It, it, people going wow, this is a real. And I remember, and here's a little bit of success for me. John goes, oh, I don't know how we'll stabilize that, and just and I said, hey, John, let's do it this way. He goes, comes back to me the next day, goes, you know what, that'll work. <laughs> he goes, I taught you too good (laughs) (laughs) Uh, and the other thing was um do you do you remember um, I think you're making it now. I'm sure you, I'm sure you, you do make those uh, liquid body shakes. You know that. Yeah, we make those now. Yeah, um, I you, remember um, you breaking down the machine at the university. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. That's true. That's the most expensive yeah. pilot test I, I ever know. did. <laughs> yes, that's um, we did at the U, 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 UQ, yeah. and um, because they had um, a good plant, um, but the only trouble is John that, clogged it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because the proteins used to co- coagulate. Yeah, we have to be very careful about it and then um you sent us down to melbourne and we worked on the um the, getting the flavor right for yep, the for the yeah, crew down there yeah. that had just started theirs yeah and and also the at, at that time uh we, we were working on definitely um the uh gels for yep. the bicycles yep. are, are you still making those no we they've come and gone look mate we would love to have a sports gel on our range it's just it's tough when it, whatever event you do you use the sports gel the event and we we weren't an event-based company so we pulled out of sports gels yeah i wish away. i still had that formula e- no, e- no, e- no, e- no, you made the sports drink too that's right but you used to make me the gel powder that i could give to teams and athletes and they could make they just had a water to make their own gel that's, that's yeah. yeah you know what i've spoken to heaps of manufacturers about that since nobody's got that nobody knows how to do that it's crazy or they're just too late I'm not sure. <laughs> John's just gone cha-ching, cha-ching. Uh, but that's yeah. a great way for teams to do things is take the powder and make their own gels. Yeah. It was yeah. an interesting time. We used to have so much fun. Yeah, I know. Yeah, fun days. Yeah. Um, now, well, getting back to the um, the big the big plant, um, the, but you say you're, you're in Melbourne now as well. You got a manufacturing plant in Melbourne. Uh, we use a lot of manufacturers in Melbourne. We've got yeah. a manufa- We've got a factory in Melbourne, yeah. Yeah, yeah. good on you. Yeah, well, we're just trying to save the uh, footprint of carting stuff up here and then carting it back. So yeah, oh, it was really a, a thing about the environment more than anything. I just remember when I back in 1999 when I went find you, I'd gone to a an event and I'd met Jim Grasso from Vitamin King and Abe from Mr. Vitamins. And I remember I was sitting there talking with them and we were talking about the industry and where it's going. And I had another brand called Far Labs back then, which was McFarland Laboratories and myself. And I had a really good tribulus tablet that dominated. There wasn't another one on the market. Mm-hmm. We we were, we, were we were killing it. Like it was, yeah. I was selling so much of it. Yeah. And I remember that product. I remember Jim from Vitamin King goes to me, Greg, I need a protein supplier. I went, okay. And he goes, all of them taste like crap. He goes, do you think you can make protein taste good? I went, of course I can. Jumped back on the plane, thought, shit. Never made a protein. <laughs> what am I going to do here? And that's where I, that's how the phone calls came. And and then is it Narden or Nardine? Na, Narden. Narden yeah. in Holland recommended that you do yeah. the flavor work with me. And I, at the time, I didn't know you did the blending as well, which was great. Yeah. But it's it's a really interesting. Like I I actually walked away with a ton order from Vitamin King and. <laughs> and Mr. Vitamins um, oh, good. on the proviso of delivering it in, like I, I said, there'll be a couple of months. Or at the time, I just did this 
should yeah. just sell something, Greg. Like, just keep moving forward, mate. Like, don't do stop. You, do you know, uh, you will well know, proteins absorb flavours. And well, that's the I reason know. why you were so fussy about we had to do a big clean down because they do absorb them like, like fats absorb flavours too. And that, that's why fat goes rancid and so on. Yep. But, you know, the other products, and like myocetin, you can sort of flavour them up because they don't have any background to it. Yep. And the, the soy in particular um, has got... A, a, a definite soy flavour, right? Yep. And some people like that flavour, right? But um, then the WPI is a cleaner flavour, but you have to work harder on um, t- getting it to taste nice. It's easy to t- blend up myocetin. And we did an eco aid for you. Yeah, you did. That's our sports drink, yeah. Yep. The, um, and that's that, that was fairly straightforward. But proteins are much harder, Greg. Yeah. Mm. I just, b- back in those days, it was really interesting to, I'd go to John with, I want to make this. And he'd go, you want to what? <laughs> you want to put flavour with. Protein, yeah. We, I remember when we made our first ever creatine glutamine HMB, we called it GHC3. And he looked at me, he goes, Why would you flavor that? Yeah, but they, they, they had a, a, a little slight flavor of, of their own. They all they did. Remember, the HMB was like, You said, This is like pool chlorine, Greg. You want me to flavor pool <laughs> chlorine? And it actually tasted good in the end. One of the really cool things that we did once, I remember we went away with Craig Alexander and a few other triathletes to an event, and you made me spaghetti bolognese flavored protein, and you made me um, lasagna, I think it was, <laughs> flavored protein. And I remember I went up there, yeah, like everyone's faces going yuck but it actually tasted when you've closed your eyes it tasted like spaghetti bowl. And I remember getting all these triathletes who weren't, you know, that they used protein for a different reason back in those days. And they just went, oh, my God, that tastes like spaghetti bolognese. <laughs> and nobody's done meat-flavoured proteins. Could be the next big thing, John. You might have been honest. That would have been back in, geez, crowy. That would be back in the 2000s and 5s and 6s type thing, I think. I remember I remember we went, <laughs> you, you sponsored a, an event uh, at Noosa uh, for, I think it was a half marathon. Um, and we stayed at we stayed at a hotel in yeah. And um, I remember um, you were sponsoring a world champion athlete there. That's Craig Alexander, yeah. Uh, and, and that's a lady, a, a woman's. Uh, the, the, the woman's. Oh, that world, might have been back with. She's a world champion. Um, I think it was the same. The same time. I just remember she was so petite, and you know, I, I said jokingly, I said, "What would happen if if uh, three big bikies um, attacked you?" And she said, "I would split their head open." <laughs> Hmm. Oh, I'll have to dig out which athlete that was. I don't remember. Yeah. But you sponsored them. Oh, yeah. mate, there's been a lot of athletes come through yeah. the stables. A lot are still really good friends to this day. Yeah. Some move yeah. on. Some have, you know, we're also talking, geez, 21 years ago. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a, it's a long yeah. time ago. So, Johnny, just in wrapping up, mate, it's really good to see you again. Mm. And you're still working. So how do people contact you if they want to? Oh, it's just best way is uh, P- uh, John McDermott at Power Up. Yep. dot com dot au. Well, that's the same email address you had when we when you started. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I actually you gave me um cards in, in our early days. <laughs> I said John McDermott at Body Science dot com. <laughs> well, you used to come around. Do I mean you were really part of the business yeah, process for yeah. me back then when I was pitching and doing things with people. Yeah, you, you, I appreciate the friendship, Greg. We've been friends forever, and um and, and, you've, and you've 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 had a stroke. You've yes, yeah. yes, unfortunately. And you've but you you're back up and moving and life's yes, good. Yes, uh, physically very well. Yeah. Just a problem with with my eyes. Yeah, yeah. You've uh, played hard during your life. You're probably just a little bit of payback there, mate. To be really honest, it was. Yes, uh, you did I live a so. good life. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's been wonderful having you back on. You know, we, we celebrated our 21st last year. My site's coming back and I really wanted to get you in for the My Site launch and tell that story about the early days when we used to. Yeah, I think the summary is, Greg, is that I like you anyway. <laughs> But the thing is that your attention to detail made us uh, even more careful. Your fastidiousness in in in, in controlling all the ingredients you used, you use you to buy the products for us, you know, and um and um you did just attention to detail. And the only thing I think I want to say is that you were so fussy about um tracing all the ingredients. Like people those days, twenty years ago, we didn't have to list all the ingredients, but you insisted, you know, that you really insisted to the suppliers, even though they thought you were a bit of a pain because <laughs> they had to you had to get all the ingredients. Absolutely everything and verified. And the other thing I wanted to say, probably repeating myself, Greg, but um, you you didn't take notice of uh, t- 
that uh, you didn't know you had to verify the nutritional business and and also I remember you had to you made us uh, check the protein content yep. of all the finished mixes you didn't have and, to do that back then either no of course mm. not and also because we say in theory it, it should be 91% protein or 88% protein but he said Greg Greg would say it would have to be analysed John because anyone could say that and we used to uh, do it for you and we also did our microbiological testing yep. as well that's um, all standard now it's pretty standard with oh, yes. brands now yeah yes. it's uh, yeah. But then the thing is, um, the other thing is that your growth, your rapid growth, um, and the idea of your um, of the uh, I thought thought the idea of the um, uh, the bicycle, the business beside the bicycle shop, is pretty good. Uh, yeah. And the, the, the Can I tell you I how that worked? I could afford the rent. <laughs> <laughs> the the other thing I wanted to say is that your you. You looked after the smaller person. For example, the vegan fellow wasn't very big those days. They have gone on to very, very big time mm. now. Um, and your your um, your idea, uh, it was, um, I think, uh, you were way ahead of your time because veganism wasn't that popular those days. And it's, 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 it's all in, in Coles and Woolies everywhere now. Uh, you can get a roast duck, for example. Yep. It's beautiful stuff. You know, The texture's so good. He meant a fake roast duck. Uh, no, I don't mean fake <laughs> roast duck. Yeah, yeah. Um, so congratulations, Greg. Thanks, mate. Yeah, sincerely, you, you've done. You come a long way in 21 years. I oh, mate, we just love having you as part of the family. It's so good that you can still come in and say yeah. hello to us. It's, I remember it means uh, a lot to me. I remember one thing you said, uh, John. If you would have brought in the business, um, <laughs> <laughs> you'd, you'd be worth a lot more money now. Uh, <laughs> it was all good fun, mate. I remember back then too. It wasn't much money either. It would have been a would have been a good buy. Just quite. I know. I know. Yeah, anyway, that's life. You um, obviously at that time were killing it because you'd uh, sold your place for a yeah. gazillion dollars. <laughs> and um, it was a pound. Yeah, it was nice. Yeah. <laughs> but mate, thank you for coming on board. Love having you here. It's really good to see you again. I know it's been a few years. Um, yep. So let's stay in touch more. Thanks, mate. Hey, team, if you can um, subscribe to the Body Science Podcast, it just helps us keep people coming in to talk about the brand, the experts coming in, people letting you know weight loss, weight gain, hormones, whatever you're interested in. We, we collate everything that comes through our customer service team and we put together um, a list of podcasts that support that. I mean, mental health has been a big one recently that's come through and people like John come out of the woodworks and tell stories about body science, which I hadn't even remembered about for a long time. And so if you could just subscribe to the podcast, that'd be fantastic so we can keep getting great people on. Thank you.